Hi folks, welcome back. Hey, just the other day I was working on the next layout update video. Well, I was going through some old files and I'd run across some pretty cool stuff. Yep, I found this one really interesting clip and I thought, you know what? I bet people would like to see this, so I posted it to our Facebook page. Well, needless to say, the video resulted in a lot of questions, comments, and folks asking to see and hear more. Alright, well that brings us to where we are now. It's time to start thinking about future operations. Now the info shared in this video can be applied to almost any layout, but let's take a look at our project layout. This is a basic mainline track diagram as a dispatcher might see it. If we were to add in a signal system, this is, eh, about what it might look like with just interlocking signals. Alright, now let's add in some intermediate and approach signals. Wow, that's a lot of signals and a lot of work for a small layout such as this. Let's look at a different method of operation, track warrant control. Yep, track warrant control, or TWC for short, works great with locations on the railroad such as name points and or milepost, among other things. On a small layout like the one we have, this is a great way to add in realistic operations. Hmm, so just what is track warrant control? You can look up the longer definition, but in short, it's a verbal authorization system used to direct movement. So what does it do? Well, there's a lot to it and we can't cover it all, but simply put, it's a means of authorizing movement and track occupancy between two points. It can be in one direction only from point A to point B or back and forth as desired. It may be just you or you and other men and equipment. Now, it can be very simple or with a bunch of variables such as when you can do it, when you can do it after something specific occurs, or how long you can do it, and so on and so on. All right, now check this out. With centralized traffic control, or CTC, the basis of authority for movement starts with what the dispatcher wants you to do, right? Only most of the time in signal territory, you receive this information by signal indication. It's like the middleman. Eh? Makes sense? You with me? Well, within track warrant control territory, the communication is directly between you and the dispatcher. You see, in track warrant territory, direct verbal communication is the only way to get this authority. You see where I'm going with this? This can make operations on your layout very interesting. Okay, let's get this party started. We're going to copy a track warrant. You ready to copy? Alright, the dispatcher is going to start by giving you a track warrant number. And these track warrant numbers are usually computer generated sequentially. You're going to enter the date. The dispatcher will have asked you beforehand or he'll already know it, but the track warrant will be issued to you or your lead engine number at your current location. Here's where the fun begins. You'll have to keep up and learn to write fast and you'll see what I'm talking about when you hear me copy a real track warrant later in the video. Okay, check box two. You're going to literally check that tick box and he'll have us proceed from a specified location or point to another specified location or point on, yep, you got it, a specified track. Now keep in mind that box two allows us to proceed from, meaning in one direction only and not back and forth. Box 11 here, which is rule 99, covers flagging rules that are not required. You can look that up online. At the bottom, you'll enter the dispatcher's initials and you'll insert your name where it says copied by. After you repeat everything correctly to him, he'll reiterate and give you the time it goes into effect or time okayed. Again, you'll see how this all comes together when I copy a real track warrant later in the video. Alright, speaking of real, let's set this up and take a look at a real stretch of railroad as it was in the late 1990s and early 2000s. At this time, I worked for Norfolk Southern out of Manassas, Virginia. On this line at the time, you needed a minimum of three track warrants to cross the line, but that rarely happened. Okay, right to left, which is east to west leaving Manassas, you could go all the way to Cody, a named point. At Cody, the line separated into two mainline tracks between Cody and Woods. Hey, another named point. Here you had the eastbound main and the westbound main. Once you got to Woods, it was single track between there and Riverton Junction. In conductor fantasy land, if there were no other traffic, we could copy three warrants and zip quietly across the line. Hmm. Well, when reality sets in, we see that this isn't the case. See, we're in Manassas ready to go westbound and there's a train out there ahead of us. That's not so bad, but we hear there's an eastbound about to enter the picture. Hmm. In the yard office over the phone, I copied our first track warrant. This illustration shows what the dispatcher gave us. Let's see, proceed from Manassas to Allison on the main track. Hmm. That's not so bad, easy day maybe. Yada yada, checkbox eight. Oh man. Do you guys remember seeing that siding on the diagram at Allison? 
That's not a main track and it surely doesn't have powered switches. Looks like we're going to have to stop, line ourselves in, reline the switch for the main, walk to the head end, etc, etc. Oh, good grief. Oh, well, it's all part of the job. Let's go to work, shall we? Okay, here's the breakdown. Track warrant number 800 will get us from Allison to Cody on the single main track. Next up, track warrant number 801 will get us from Cody to Woods on the west bound main track. Track warrant number 802 is a little different. We can go from Woods to River to Junction, but by checking box 5, not until after the arrival of locomotive number 8378. We'll be looking out. He's, he's 
that uh, Juanita's boyfriend out there. Yeah. I was going to say hello, Mr. Campbell. Hello, Mr. Campbell. An Ah, track warrant control. As you can see, it could make operations very interesting on a model railroad. Obviously, I couldn't cover all aspects of this method, and I stuck with the basic concept. Either way, I hope it gave you a good insight, and maybe even the inspiration to give it a try. There's more videos on the way. Be sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and follow the progress. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.